good to be back with you and to share some from God's Word. We finally made a turn in our morning study at Ruhema Baptist Church uh, from 1 Thessalonians and now into the first chapter of 2 Thessalonians. And uh, I'm hoping these uh, Sunday morning uh, lessons will be a big blessing and encouragement for the, uh, of course, growing spiritually, but also that God's Word will really minister to lives of people that are listening. And I, I wanted to so I wanted to point out one of the points from the message this week to you today. And uh, in uh, the the one was it was an answer to a prayer that Paul had prayed for the Thessalonians in First uh, Thessalonians chapter three, verse twelve. He said, "May the Lord, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love." To one another and to all, just as we do to you. So his prayer was that their love would increase toward one another, and of course, not just their group, but others too. But he, his specific prayer request was that their love for one another would be increasing. And uh, and then when we get to Second Thessalonians, the second letter that he sent to them, he said, "We're bound to thank God always for you, brothers." as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So what Paul had prayed, now he's thanking God for. So there's an, uh, th a thanks toward God for what had happened in their lives and how God had heard and answered the prayer. Well, how does that, how does that affect us? And that, how should we think about this? And well, one, obviously, uh, believers are called on to love one another, to show the love of Christ to others, uh, especially in the body of Christ and, in, and specifically, like in Thessalonica, in their local community, showing the love of Christ to other believers there and to all, he said. And so I think that uh, that applies to us, obviously. And we can say all day long, we're supposed to love each other, we're supposed to love each other, we're supposed to love each other, but our, maybe we should make it a subject of our prayer that God, God's love would increase in us and in others. And so maybe our church could be a place where God's love is increasing. And uh, obviously, the God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, we, we are those that believe that message. We've received that Christ. We've, re in that sense, received the love of God. And the Holy Spirit sheds that love abroad in our hearts. And uh, that's the work of the Spirit. And the love of God is dynamic and powerful and can work in you to change you, of course, but work through you to encourage and change others by God's love. And of course, that, you know, announcing the message of God's love is one thing, but showing God's love is also uh, part, of, part of that. And being able to be a part of the community where God's love is centered and God's mercies are centered. Jesus Christ came to show us the love of God. He sacrificed himself entirely. How do we know God loves us? Because Jesus Christ died for our sins. That's how we know God loves us. So there's a great sacrifice involved in uh, the expression of God's love to us through his son, our savior, Jesus Christ. If you know this Lord Jesus Christ, then you can experience and you know and experience the love of God. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, then the love of God is kind of an esoteric discussion. It's kind of a distant uh, discussion for you. And But my, the good news today is, my friends, that you can experience the love of God in your life. And, and be able to, uh, of course, uh, have it in your life, but also to share it with others. So many people, you know, part of the times we're living is that the love of many has grown cold. And uh, so natural love can only carry us so far. Natural human love can only carry us so far. And there are many sacrifices made for human love. But God's love, agape love, in us and through us can carry us all through our life and into eternity. God's love is powerful. It's towards you. It's 
God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So his love is toward you, it's toward us. And we are able to benefit from that love, of course, by receiving, by believing Christ and turning from our sins and putting our trust and hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of love. And this is our the message of the gospel, basically is that we can we can know what the love of God is. Now, for those Thessalonians, Paul wanted them to increase in love toward one another. And he understood that it was a work of God, a work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So he prayed for it first. So if you feel like there's a lack of love in your life, or something missing in, in your church or your community or your family. Let's be those like Paul. Oh, let's pray that God's love would be extended and would increase in those around us and in, in, the, in our churches especially and in our communities and in our nation. You know, when we think about revival, it's a call to repentance but after repentance, there's an experiencing of God's love and a showing of God's love that, that is uh, present and powerful. I think you'd agree with me. There's a lot of lack of the love of God around us. Help us to be those that are showing, expressing, and praying that God's love will be a reality in the lives of those around us. Let's pray uh, together. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your love increase in our lives, in our church, in our community, our state, our nation. May your love increase in those that are serving you. May your love increase in their hearts too. And we pray for those that are so lacking in the love of God. They're missing it. This generation, Lord, help them to experience the love of God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.